Okay, thanks everyone. I'm not Miles Manis, um, but I am. Sta he couldn't uh, attend, so he asked me to present these slides because I have helped him a little bit with some of the work when he was our fellow. Currently, he's an assistant professor at the uh, University of British Columbia, uh, but he had started this work during his time in fellowship with us. And so we're going to talk about the application of stimulated Raman histology and its role. Uh, these are Miles' con conflicts of interest. They do. I do not have any. So stimulated Raman histology, or SRH, is a, the opportunity to do an unprocessed, real-time histologic evaluation with Raman histology. Uh, it has a uh, device that's been pioneered primarily in neurosurgery world uh, at NYU, but what it, you can do is you can take an unprocessed piece of tissue and run it through this device that will run the, near, uh, the, the Raman histology wavelength at the tissue, and you can get some feedback uh, right, real time as to histology. Now the device needs to take a few pieces of a, of a, a standard prostate biopsy core, it'll run it a few times, so it takes about three to four minutes to run this. Uh, the image sort of gets processed, and then basically that's what the output starts to look like. So in a real time uh, workflow, you can take this biopsy, run this SRH, and then you get this image, and you as an operator can run your own histopath evaluation and make your own decision, but then there's a neural network that can, can analyze that for you as well. So we employed this as a, a pilot study to see about using real-time biopsy at the time of a cryoablation to assess disease margin and then potentially change treatment during the, during the actual procedure. I think one of the very important aspects of any partial gland treatment strategy is having a robust intraoperative, intraprocedure feedback that you're actually getting the disease encompassed in a treatment volume that ensures treatment ki or cell kill. With cryo, for example, you have ice and temperatures. Uh, for uh, IRE, you know, you're running enough voltage across, but there are still questions, did you get it at the margin, et cetera, real time, it, despite all of our, our best assumptions. So what we did is we piloted this patient, uh, piloted the process by taking four to seven biopsies through the procedure, and so I think it's best uh, illustrated by this example. So here's a patient with an anterior medial tumor. That's the index lesion. You would take a biopsy when you're in the operating room just before treatment. That confirms that that's the disease location real time. Okay, now you would take some margins of the, in, of the lesion itself and say, okay, this is what my initial treatment plan will be. Now we would then take some one centimeter margins. And for example, that second dot on the patient's right was found to be with the real time ROM and histology to be positive. And so you could say, okay, well, now I need to extend the treatment, and include that margin. And so then we also ran the final margins after treatment, and you could see that at that point, it's a little difficult to see here, but that second margin, this is a negative. Okay, so that basically gave us real-time feedback that our margins were treated accordingly, and we could adapt and change the treatment real-time. This is what the uh, Raman histology starts to look like on a, a comparison to H&E, because in this study we did an H&E to give the quote-unquote ground truth to each of these cores, and anything that's showing up here as this uh, reddish color corresponds with glandular structures that are, are consistent with on H&E with a grade two cancer. Uh, so essentially, you know, the, the accuracy of these steps were in the 90% range, and I can't speak exactly to some of the details of Miles' work here, but it, it, it overall was very encouraging that we could get an accurate read real time. And um, basically at this point, uh, you know, it is a pilot study, and there needs to be more work done on this, but real time tissue monitoring of this nature could be very helpful in any of our focal therapy approaches. Thank you. shooting myself in the foot by asking so many questions before I present, but very interesting um, data here, but how would you suggest you start counseling patients and consenting them preoperatively if theoretically in real time you're changing the margins and therefore potential functional outcomes? Absolutely. So you, you first have to start by explaining to them your approach based on the disease location in the first place. And so I do that routinely if it's a posterior lesion, say, look, you know, I'm going to need to assess the margin and put energy into your nerve 
bundle region. That's going to result in some in more, higher risk of impact on your erectile function. The ejaculatory function is another very important conversation we've had uh, come up a number of times. If you know that you're very likely going to take some uh, substantial amount of tissue that may then further impact ejaculation and loss of anti-grade ejaculation, I'd tell them that as well. Uh, and th you know, this could then be part of your consent, but when you're talking about the treatment planning beforehand, that's what we would do, and then we would just include a prostate biopsy in the, in the, uh, the consent. But the question is, you know, this is still very pilot, you know, and so we kind of warn them it might extend the treatment. But as we know, you know, a, a single additional treatment typically doesn't substantially raise your, your gland uh, associated to side effects. Hi, thank you. That's absolutely brilliant. Uh, there's obviously a lot going on at the moment around digital pathology and AI reporting. Um, can I ask why you didn't take biopsies of the actual lesion itself? We did. The, the, the that first biopsy was performed, yeah. I know after treatment. Oh, after treatement, I think I think that uh, Miles did have some of that. He did. He, he did it. Yeah, he yeah. Let it thaw for quite some time. To yes. Be able to yes. It. Yeah. So that that is always part of the process. So you get the big ice ball in there, and then you try to like get a margin piece. And so there are some technical aspects that we were still working out. I mean, this is a very limited pilot study, but we did take some post. You know, I, I'll be honest. Sometimes that at the end of the case, after two freestyle cycles, that didn't happen. But yeah, we were trying to to do that. You could add a fourth cycle. You could do all sorts of things. Correct. If you think there was residual disease. Yeah. So, cool. Thank you. Jim, um, you know, it begs the question, can you do, you know, in the future, do you think this means that we would be able to do something in the same setting? Now, you know, obviously you have to have the opportunity to counsel the patient, but let's say you're doing a confirmatory biopsy, like, you know, the initial abstract that you mentioned, where some of that counseling has already happened, uh, that rather than having to have a separate session, that you would be able to maybe make your diagnosis or confirm your diagnosis in terms of candidacy and then treat them in the same setting? Certainly. I think uh, we saw that with the Claricorp biopsy device that we, we presented a few years ago at AUA, which is a similar real-time feedback of spectroscopy on the tissue to try to give you a, a positive or negative, which you could employ in this way. And so it does prompt us this concept. If you, you, know, you came in with a, an MRI with a lesion and you know, real time, we said, you know, this looks highly suspicious for prostate cancer. We're going to confirm its its uh, cancerous nature and go forward with a, a local treatment right now. And I think it certainly is within the realm of possibility as this becomes more robust. Thank you. Uh, absolutely brilliant. But uh, I just wanted to ask, um, why did you take one sample? I mean, my experience is, you know, you know when I'm doing the left posterior apex, you know, I always, and I'm worried about the area, you know, four is my sort of lower limit of uh, being cer certain. Why, why one? Because, well, I mean, if it's negative, I mean, how yeah. much confidence have you got in that? Well, the, the issue is with it really just the processing of the, the, the core now. So each of these took three to four minutes. And if you were going to wait for a feedback and you start to take four, you're looking at, you know, extending things into the half hour per each point. So that's why. 